Hi again. We are talking today about um, inter interosseous membranes. So interosseous membranes, um, as the name suggests, um, are, well, let's talk about what the name suggests. So inter meaning uh, between. Osseous is referring to bone, so the O, the os, um, O-S. Um, there was a, um, a dish that was served at the Savoy many years ago, I don't know if it's still there, um, and it was called Eau de Veau, um, and it was a shin bone of veal that was wrapped in a crisp white linen, um, and it was a steamed shin bone, and it was uh, served with a long spoon, um, and you would eat the marrow out of the uh, shin bone, it was served with butter, and it was a, it was a bit of a specialty. Anyway, so, um, tangents they're called. So, <laughs> So the, um, the interosseous membrane, interosseous membrane, um, is a membrane that sits between, supposedly between the uh, bones, um, various bones, but uh, particularly the sort of the long bones that we're talking about here. So we've got the, uh, the fib fibula and the tibia, and we have this interosseous membrane that sort of sits between the two. Um, and it serves as um, a separation between the, both the, the front portion of the leg and the back portion of the leg. And uh, again, we'll look at the traditional element of it, but I find the interosseous membrane quite an interesting thing because if you just, if you just see it as a, as a sheet, as, as a thing that goes from a bone to a bone, uh, then, you know, that's what it's there. It's there to create an attachment site for these long muscles. And again, bear in mind, as far as the foot is concerned, you know, you've got your, your toe structures going virtually all the way up to the knee. So they go up a long way and there's a lot of um, strength and stability that is needed. And so the interosseous membrane will give it that. But you'll also have a, a, an attachment site at the back. So you've got the tibialis posterior and tibialis anterior um, joining up and being connected to this interosseous membrane. So the other thing I think of them is, is, is as thinking of them as, as like uh, sort of a dumbbell effect, if you like. Let me just go and get something um, because I've just, it's just occurred to me that this might be a useful analogy. Don't tell him I've got this. If I press it and it squeaks, we're in trouble. So, so imagine, imagine uh, this being uh, the, the sort of the whole bone, if you like, and this being the whole bone and this being the membrane. What we can see is that it doesn't just stop at either end, but it carries on and becomes the whole uh, structure. So the interosseous membrane, which is, you know, collagenous in the same nature, is effectively uh, going to go um, and continually wrap around the bone on either side of it. This is going to become uh, the sort of the periosteum of the bone and, and blend deeply into it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the, uh, the strength that it would need. It would just sort of pull apart. And so now what we see is we see the various aspects of the bone attaching to both sides of the, uh, the uh, interosseous membrane and also to the bone. Um, and then also that interosseous membrane continuing to wrap around. So it doesn't just create, say, a separation between the uh, tibialis anterior um, and the tibialis posterior, but it creates actually a connection. So what we now see is we see, we can think of the interosseous membrane, and I don't know if I can say it, <laughs> we can now think of the interosseous membrane as not just being a separator but between the two, uh, between the two muscles, but being um, effectively a structural adjoining wall, much be, you know, like me and my neighbors and their barky dogs. So um, uh, therefore, what we could also see is we could also see a potential change in the way that load would be transferred through it um, and the way that um, forces and, and vibration and movement and fluid again uh, would be translated through it as well as um, it having the stability. We also see the interosseous membrane here on the, on the forearm. So that's between the, uh, the radius and the ulna. So uh, radius on the thumb side and the ulna on the other side. And again, this is going to give this uh, ability for these long levery type uh, muscles that are going to reach down all the way into the fingers, all the way through in, in, into the hand. Um, and it's going to give it that strength for us to be able to then load and pull and, uh, and, and do all the things that we, you know, we, we, we want to do uh, with our forearm. It's quite a big deal. So from this instance, we can see that the interosseous membrane is really flexible as well. It's gonna, it's gonna allow that movement and flexibility. And again, um, that flexibility is only gonna come about if it's really secure on either side of it. So, so it's going to sort of blend itself uh, into those tissues that, we can, that we're gonna call the, the periosteum. So, uh, so there we go, interosseous membranes. Is there a plural, different plural for uh, membrane, membrana? Did I steal your toy? Here we go. You better leg that, leg it away with that then. All right, I won't steal it again. I'm sorry. <laughs>